Oh, they got a movie screen. How do you like it, he says. <laughs> <laughs> His flower. <laughs> and Brooke says, uh, uh, no, no. no, it was. It was a lovely meal. And please, uh, let's all get seated here for this uh, festive occasion. Monday is not a good night to stay up late. Ladies and gentlemen, of course. We're not going to know that. <laughs> no, it's the guy and his wife. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, may uh, may we have a big hand for Mr. Phil Shap. Being on radio, I rarely get a round of applause, and I might even get another one when I tell you I'm going to keep it very, very short. <laughs> There's something very important happening here tonight, and a lot of enjoyment and fun coming your way with the musical presentation, which will include the very living tradition of jazz and its future, which is joining with it in the various ensembles that we're going to be meeting up with. Of course, we represent the Parsons New School program of jazz studies and that is the program that you're supporting by coming here tonight and this is our first graduating class this year I know we've been open for five years you see I failed a lot of the students because they didn't know Coleman Hawkins body and soul but they now know that record <laughs> and I think they also know Charlie Parker's Coco uh, I didn't have to fail anybody on that one well we passed the test and your attendance tonight I think proves that. There are some other things to celebrate tonight and I, I think that 
you might even know that with these musicians who are honoring tonight, and I don't just mean our guest of honor, because there are a lot of reunions and even first meetings going on between musicians ranging towards the age of 90 and dabbling down well into the mid-teens. And it means that each and every one of the players who are going to be swinging for you tonight are going to hear an accolade while they're alive. And I know that we're here to keep this music alive. That's really the whole essence of it. And there have been some very sad notices in our newspapers of late, you know. And it's not just Sarah Vaughan and Dexter Gordon. And then to let someone like the great Cab Calloway hear that roar. You know, someone's got to be the next UB Blake, and I'm voting for Cab Calloway tonight. And this would be the first step towards his working his way towards that century mark. But there are a lot of other musicians, and when you see them, particularly this first band, and then the union of the students and the legends of jazz and the great big band tonight, let them hear it tonight, because it's their night. Well, I'm basically superfluous uh, as a non-combatant, and uh, that's the truth, I know. And I've even been supplanted, and the man who introduced me, of course, needs no introduction, but I think he deserves to hear an accolade right now, and I'd like to bring him back on. Bill Cosby. Um, those of you uh, who have not seen Phil, he shaved. <laughs> the, the only problem doing radio, Phil had a full-growth beard. And I, I asked him, I said, why did you shave? Because there's two things that you do, human beings do, and they have a reason. And that is women cut their hair for a reason. And men shave for a reason. And he said he didn't know why. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, all of the people in the Survivors Band, please come up here. Or else this is it. <laughs> no, you play trumpet. This is the piano. You have to play. You have to go and sit in the trumpet section. You know? <laughs> some of them are here, some of them are here. The trumpet section. Did anyone? Sir, just have a sit down, sir. <laughs> Is Cab out there? Cab, where were they when you last saw them? Okay, you're the piano player. You, you sit there. That's, you, you don't move, damn it. I'm getting tired of you people. There you go. Just come on around and put it down. I think we're going to hear nothing, nothing but ballads tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I got rid of them all with brushes. Watch it. <laughs> well, you're not sitting up straight. You got a snare drum with leather heads. Will the survivors band, please? Well, okay, hit it, boys. You gotta get the left hand working the bass pitcher. We were supposed to show the young fella something, but uh, I think they may get out of music after looking at this. Yeah. All right, no? Oh, wow. Now, you play the bass. Do you have one, son? No, you can't find one. No, that's the piano. No, that's the piano. I quit. to start a choir. One more. Huh? What, who just told me? Somebody just woke him up or what? Is the nap all finished now? Now come on, you sit down in the other reading section here. Now wait, 
The altos should not sit that close to the trumpets because you all have more range than the trumpet and you're going to make him look bad. So sit in the back. Look at what are you doing? Sit, sit down, I told you. Now, how far away do you want this so you can see it? Why are you standing? Another one's coming? Yeah, oh, does who, who is this for, Dan? Dan, give this to Milk. Milk? You've had this with you for some time. Yeah. All right, now open it up. Okay. <laughs> hey, will you stop wandering around? <laughs> Sit down. All right, the first song is uh, Because. <laughs> Sir, are you all right? Do you know what we're doing here? <laughs> Who are you looking for? What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, all right, come on. Take your toilet plunge if you got you, you, no, you, That's a saxophone. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Survivor's Band. <laughs> uh, a band that, uh, a band that speaks for itself. <laughs> What is our first number? I'm confessing. Okay. Or getting to know you. <laughs> All right. Let me hear you. Just give him a little lip to touch the button. There you go. All right. That's enough. No, you don't want Georgia Brown. You want Georgia Brown? Sweet Georgia Brown. Sweet. Uh oh. Challenge. Challenge.
Keep me your hands together, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to bring up Mr. Jimmy Scott. Little Jimmy Scott. Now, uh, Jimmy didn't know that I was going to call him up to sing with the Survivors Band, but if ever the word Survivor... <laughs> thank you. We don't have to say any more. Survivor, little Survivor Jimmy Scott.
Jimmy Scott. And the survivors. And the survivors. Ladies and gentlemen, it don't mean a thing if he doesn't have something.
I can't I get started. Ladies and gentlemen, I got rid of quick. <laughs>
Survivor's Band, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, and members of the Survivor's Band, Don Clinton, he worked up with the Savoy Ballroom for many years, and you may remember him from that Tiffin In solo with Erskine Hawkins. How about Mr. Bobby Johnson on cover? I don't know how he could get over to that side of the bandstand so fast. I, I'm telling you, because he'll be 80 in June from Cab Calloway to the Judge. No, no. For many years, he took the swinging sounds of jazz across the entire world, all the continents, except I believe you left out Antarctica. The name of the band was The Saints and Sinners. Bill Cosby wanted to know why I shaved my beard. I want to know which one were you, the saint or the sinner? But this is Red Richards at the piano. He just made the cutoff. You had to be 70 to be in this band, and I had the honor of co-sponsoring a 70th birthday party for him last September, uh, December, excuse me, I almost got it wrong, you know. This man arrived in New York City August 9th of 1938. The next day, Roy Eldridge had already forgotten his name and said, Hey, Panama, because of his hat. That's David Panama Francis on drums. <laughs> Cab Calloway alumni are abounding on this bandstand, but before he played with Cab Calloway, he helped introduce Count Basie's sound to the world with the great Benny Moten's Kansas City Orchestra. And even before that, he did us all a favor by lending the record to Lester Young. I don't even think he even ever got it back. It was singing the blues, Vixen Tram, on Red Label OK, and he gave it to Lester Young. He gave you some tonight, his own tenor saxophone concept, Miss Eddie Bearfield. Thank you. Thank you. The senior member of our survivors band, Eddie Bearfield. You know, I know Bill didn't think this guy was going to get with it because he was downstairs and he didn't get any of the punchlines of your joke, but the first thing he did today was call Sweet Georgia Brown and really get this band started, and that's because he's one of the generals. He led the reed section in the original Count Basie Orchestra. He's 75 years young. Earl Ronald Warren of Springfield, Ohio. Our survivors band. And they're still keeping on. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Phil Shep. All right. I know. Uh, I know. Is uh, is Mr. Shertoff here? <laughs> yeah. Come up, please. I don't. Where's the screen? Oh, it's going to come down. You're in charge of that. Have fun. <laughs> See, that's an easy person to follow. <laughs> that's why. So is Dave Church on. <laughs> this, uh, this film tribute, assuming that we get the screen down, will be covering about a 20-year period in Cab's career from the early 30s to the early 50s, but we're going to be doing it in reverse chronological order so that by the end of this sequence, uh, Cab will be 25 again. Clip number one features one of those small groups that Cab fronted during that period in the late 40s, early 50s, uh, when it became so uh, economically unfeasible to continue maintaining a big band. Uh, bookings were very scarce, bebop was in, small groups were in, television was in, and uh, really the only thing they kept to do at that point was to disband. Now, this particular unit that we're going to be seeing here was billed as Cab Calloway and his Cavaleros. And it was a wonderful little band with Jonah Jones on trumpet, um, Mr. Dave Rivera at the piano, Milt Hinton, and Panama Francis on bass and drums. Now, Camp was a prolific composer. He, he wrote dozens and dozens of tunes uh, for his bands and his groups over the years, including uh, the piece that we're going to see here in this first clip, a little thing called The Callaway Boogie. Uh, it was filmed in 1951, and Camp is joined in this performance by the very talented Marie Bryant, who well, many of you may recognize as the singer, dancer, from the celebrated film short, Jam and the Blues. 
The second item uh, features the tune with which Cab has been most closely associated over the years, and of course, that's Minnie the Moocher. Now this is a tune that Cab had written uh, in collaboration uh, way back in 1931. Uh, he recorded it with his band, and very quickly it became his theme song. Now this version of Minnie the Moocher, because it was filmed several times, was shot in the early 40s, and the band that Cab had at this time was without question one of the finest big bands of its time. Uh, among the musicians that you'll be seeing on screen here are uh, Shad Collins, who handles all of the solo trumpet work, uh, Jonah Jones, Lamar Wright, and Russell Smith rounding out the uh, trumpet section, trombonist Tyree Glenn, Quentin Butter Jackson, and Keg Johnson. In the reed section, you had Jerry Blake, Teddy McRae, Hilton Jefferson, Walt, uh, Walter Foots Thomas, and Andrew Brown. And then there was that marvelous rhythm section of Benny Payne, Danny Barker, Milt Hinton, and Cozy Cole. It's just a great, great band. Now, as, as far as the song is concerned, uh, Minnie the Moocher, as you know, is one of these call and response kinds of songs where the band is obligated to repeat certain phrases that Cab says, uh, no matter how unusual and, and, and creative these phrases are. And it became the uh, common practice, once these, this song uh, caught on, for audiences to uh, join in as well. Audience. <laughs> Uh, this is a sound it was filmed back in 1942. Clip number three is an excerpt from the 1936 Warner Brothers musical The Singing Kid, uh, in which Cab co-starred with Al Jolson. This was Cab's third uh, feature film, and as a matter of fact, it was Cab himself who initiated his uh, involvement in this project. It seems that during one of his uh, many uh, residencies at the uh, Cotton Club, Cab heard that Jolson was about to film a new uh, uh, a uh, movie out in the coast, in the west coast, and uh, he persuaded the Cotton Club management to do whatever they could to get him uh, a role in that film, which they did. Uh, apparently, they had some clout, these uh, Cotton Club people. Anyway, <laughs> the, um, the Singing Kid had a Yip Harburg, uh, Harold Arlen score, and the clip that we're going to be seeing represents one of the uh, musical highlights. Uh, it's a number called I Love to Singa, and I'm not going to describe it to you uh, so that those of you who have never seen this particular unusual sequence can get the full impact of it, just like those original audiences did back in 1936. And finally, we're going to uh, end this tribute with uh, another Hollywood excerpt. This is from the movie The Big Broadcast. Uh, this was filmed in 1932. It was Kev's first picture. And he does a tune here called Kicking the Gong Around. This band that you'll be seeing here in this clip uh, included several members of uh, originally uh, of people who had been in a group called the Missourians, which was the, ba the, the uh, band that uh, Cab took over back in 1930. The personnel that you'll be seeing here is as follows. Andrew Brown, Arville Harris, Walter Thomas again, and Eddie Bearfield on reeds, uh, DePriest Wheeler and Harry White on trombone, the rhythm section of Benny Payne again, Morris White on guitar, Al Morgan on bass, and Leroy Maxey on drums, and the trumpet section, including Edward Swayze, Lamar Wright, and the legendary Doc Cheatham. Oh. Now, Kicking the Gone Around was one of Cab's earliest compositions, and uh, it was not one of his most uh, subtle songs. In fact, uh, the amazing thing is that it, it uh, got by the senses at all. They probably didn't know what he was talking about, but uh, in any case, it's a memorable performance that features some uh, magnificent and inimitable Callaway choreography. Once again, it was filmed in 1932, and that will bring us to the end of our film tribute to uh, our newest beacon of jazz, the wonderful Cab Callaway. Thank you.
So many wonderful things for so many great causes, and uh, I think it's especially nice that, that he's here uh, for this event. I, uh, I was talking to a friend of yours just a moment ago on the car phone as I drove in here, uh, Harry Belafonte, and I told him I told him that I was coming here to do this for Cab because we were of the same generation. Y'all didn't get that? You want to hear that again? Well, that's what I get for being on the stage with a real comic. <laughs> let me let me get on with my business. I read I read proclamations. I read proclamations real well. I ain't too tough with the jokes. <laughs> I tell you I tell you I'll tell you a story though that make you laugh. And if if cars don't laugh then it means he doesn't have a sense of humor. <laughs> it's a story, no, it's a story of my bride, the grandmother of my grandchildren, my wife, Joyce. That's her name, Joyce. <laughs> we were... <laughs> we, were we were riding along in the car. <laughs> I'm going to crack him up. We were... We were riding along in the car, and I looked out, and I see this fella with a shovel digging this ditch. And I said, Joyce, isn't that the fella you used to date? She says, yeah. I said, well, you know, see, if you'd married him, then you'd be married to a ditch digger. She said, no, if I'd married him, he'd be mayor. so many of you here though. Let, let me read this. It reads, Office of the Mayor, City of New York Proclamation. Whereas Cab Calloway, one of the great entertainers of this century with his unique musical and sartorial style is one of this country's most beloved musicians. And whereas a star 60 years ago on Broadway and at Harlem's legendary Cotton Club, Cab Calloway has been an international star ever since in the theater, in the movies, on television, and in nightclubs and concert halls. Wherever people love music, they love Cab Calloway. And whereas Cab Calloway's inventive style of speaking, dressing, singing, and leading a band has been affectionately imitated, but as with all true originals, the model for sport and life will always be one of a kind. And whereas his generosity of spirit has always led Cab Calloway to spot and develop tomorrow's great jazz soloists, and he remains an inspiration to today's top young entertainers. Now, therefore, I, David M. Dinkins, Mayor of the City of New York, in recognition of the great joy he has given to the world for 60 years, do hereby proclaim Monday, May 7, 1990, in the City of New York as Cab Calloway Day. Thank you all. I 
And that's still a generation. And I'm telling you, that's a good looking generation.
I've been playing it this way for the last couple of years. It's just gotten worse and worse. And worse. <laughs> it still plays great. But, huh? He's 22. You got some underwear on the little ends. You want people to say, look at that raggedy horn. Is that, is that right? Huh? You, do you remember, um, what, what was the fellow's name from out of Philadelphia, the tenor, tenor player? Rubens Harley. No, Rubens Harley is uh, bagpipes. <laughs> bagpipes. Reg, you've been out of town a long time. Huh? <laughs> What's his demon? Was? Jimmy. Jimmy, no. Jimmy, bad man. Ensemble? Sure. What would you like? Blues. Blues? That's tough. <laughs> Jay Rodriguez, ladies and gentlemen. Thank <laughs> you. 
You know, when Bill Cosby called me up here a second ago, I thought he must have just wanted me to introduce the members of the band, but I think that is part of why I was called up here, because this is our future, this is our past and our present, and a round of applause for the entire ensemble might be due. Jimmy Cozier on alto saxophone. From the school, Walter Blanding Jr. on tenor. You know, I thought I gave him a hard time. You know, he was in my class and he said, well, I'm sorry, I gotta go join Prince's band, so I gave him a D. The man, he, he was put on the spot by Bill Cosby. He came across Jay Rodriguez on the baritone saxophone. Jack Jeffers on trombone. Eddie Burke. A miracle worker in the upper register, Britt Woodman. Another of the students, Jamal Haynes. Our future, Roy Hargrove on tennis trumpet. And our future from the school, Rebecca Franks on trumpet. Everybody's asking me if I know his birthday. I know his middle name, Toussaint L'Overture. This is Donald Byrd on trumpet. Bridgewater on trumpet, Bernard Pretty Purdy on drums. Now I got a junior high school picture of Archie Shep and Reggie Workman. Are you in that picture too, Bill? No, this is uh, class of 52 from the junior high school scene. Reggie Workman on the bass. No one calls him Julian anymore. He played with Julian Adderley and this is Julian Junior Mance on piano. Now comes the hard part, but also one of the greatest honors. Uh, maybe I have been called here because we got the real thing this time. This medallion has finally been cast, and 
We have had a cast of people come before us in the past few years, Howard McGee, Buck Clayton, and Roy Eldridge, and we told them that we love them and that they are the greatest. And by giving the Beacons of Jazz Award to anyone, you're saying that they're one of the leading lights in art of all time, but you're also saying that they're the, the light up in the tower showing the way to the future for all these people. And Cab, who saw the big band ever go away, just had a great big band serenade him. The music lives on, and so does this greatest gentleman, one of the most amazing people, and perhaps on this occasion I should call him the most important person on the face of the earth, Cab Calloway.
here. Thank you so very much. Now, everybody join in and sing the Heidi Highs and the Holy Ghost. Penny the Moochie. tradition here um, once a year obviously or twice a year whatever is, this is going to happen cab uh, would you step forward please now when mr. cab Calloway found out that he was going to receive this award cab said something in the meeting that meant an awful lot to us he said he would like to give something and so Cab went into his pocket and came up with a certain amount of dough. Will the gentleman from Yamaha please come out? This, ladies and gentlemen, obviously is a brand new 
tenor saxophone that Mr. Cap Calloway purchased for a young man who's been playing with rubber bands in his horn for so long. Walter Blandings, would you please? Beautiful tenor horn. Oh, that's a wizard. It's a beauty. Gee, that reminds me of the time. 19, 1928. Selma. Selma saxophone. Presented me with a horn. And it was a tenor alpha. But this is a tenor, and I can't, I can't play the tenor. <laughs> that's why, yeah, that's why I'm giving it to you. You know, for one thing, if you had a Walter's horn, which is kind of shiny here, he borrowed for this evening because Walter's been playing a horn. Walter's a marvelously talented kid, and I guess for the purpose of this evening, which is all about scholarships, is that this is a hell of an expensive city to live in, and life being what it is, it's, it's expensive to go to school, and Walter's been going to school, but uh, there wasn't anything left over for the horn. So the investment in rubber bands was a lot, uh, it's a lot cheaper than a new horn. And actually, this is a, a little idea that was cooked up by Bill Cosby and Cab. And, uh, and I think it's a total surprise. I hope it's a total surprise. <laughs> so, I guess on behalf of the Beacons and Jazz, and by the way, is it engraved? It was supposed to be engraved to say, oh, it's going to get engraved. It's going to, it's going to be the Cab Calloway tenor. Yeah, I think uh, given the fact that Walter is one of our really most promising young people and, and uh, has his mouthpiece here, that maybe he ought to play a little bit for us. I don't really know what to say. Uh, <laughs> I'm very grateful. Uh, just like to say thank you very much. This is a big surprise. That's about it. <laughs> beautiful thing about music is the beautiful thing about being a musician is you don't have to say anything. All you have to do is play. So why don't you just play for us and that'll say it all. If I may just add some little quick thing while he's thinking what he's going to play. I've known Walter personally, uh, my name is Bud DeFleury, the artist relations manager from Yamaha. I've known this young man for four years and spotted his talent way, way back. I have no part of this except to just accede to the fact that we would see what that the instrument got here. But Walter, you should all know, uh, was the catalyst for an idea which I had two years ago, and Walter was the recipient of the very first presentation and nomination and acceptance into a program which we call the Yamaha Young Performing Artists. He was just a surprise when we started that program a year and a half ago, and it's just appropriate that the first instrument that's going to be given in this program, Walter, is given to you. So congratulations, man.
Which one do you want to use? Uh, Catherine the Great. Oh. Yeah, piano. I guess it's all the